The top surface of this model has a convex curvature to it. Between the top face and the base are three concave surfaces. Looking from the top, the general profile is made up of three lobes. When it comes to tackling models such as this, it is often instructive to try to sketch out how the model looks from the different primary planes and take it one step at a time. So in this case, let's not worry about the curvature of the top face for the moment. Let's do a sketch of the three lobes on the top plane. We shall start with the circle. Select the horizontal vertical constraint and click on the center point of the circle and the origin. Fusion would infer based on the relative location of the points and impose a vertical relationship. The three lobes are evenly spaced from each other at a 120 degree angle. Go to create circular pattern. For objects, click on the circle. For center point, click on the select box and select the origin. By setting the quantity to 3, this will create 3 circles based at 120 degrees from each other. Next, we want to create an arc that is tangent to both these circles. Let's try using the tangent arc command. When you hover over the circle, you can see that it does not snap to the circle. Tangent arcs can only snap to open endpoints. Let's use a 3-point arc instead. Snap one end to the top circle and snap the other end to this circle. Adjust the arc until you can get one end to snap in a tangent fashion to one of the circles. Click at this point to put down the arc. The other end of the arc is not tangent to the circle that it is touching. Select the tangent constraint and click on the arc and the circle. Looking at the base of the finished model, the circles are actually joined by straight lines. To make it easier to put down constraints, I will draw the line between these two circles. Start the light command and hover over the circle. When the cross appears, this means that you have snapped to the circle. At this point, if you click and drag, the line automatically snaps to the circle in a tangent fashion. Without letting go of the mouse, move the cursor to the other circle and move along that circle until you see a tangent constraint appear. Once you see that, let go of the mouse. With that, the two tangent constraints are added in automatically. The next step is to pattern the arc and a straight line. Begin the circular pattern tool. Select the arc and a straight line as the objects and the origin as the center point. Set the quantity to 3 and confirm. Let's hide this first sketch. Next, let's take a look at creating a sketch profile to take care of the top surface curvature. If we look at the cross section, we can see that this can actually be created by revolving an arc. Let's start a sketch on the front plane. Create a 3 point arc in space. Draw two straight lines to join the origin to the end points of the arc. Select the horizontal vertical constraint and click on the lines to impose a horizontal and vertical constraint respectively. Again, Fusion would infer the constraints by analyzing the rough positioning of the lines. In order to get a smooth spherical surface at the top after the revolve, we need to make sure that the arc is tangent to the horizontal at this point. Draw a horizontal line at this point. Right click and set it to construction. Impose a tangent constraint between the arc and the construction line. Go to create, revolve. Select the closed profile. For the axis, select this line.
unhide the first sketch and control select these contours. Begin the extrude command. This might seem like an odd set of choices, as the aim here is to remove material on the outside. Under operation, there is actually an interesting option called intersect. If we select that, the extrude option actually calculates the overlapping volume between the solid created by the three lobes and the revolve, removing the excess material in the process. At this point, let's split the body into two. The strategy here is to work on one section and do a circular pattern thereafter. We could certainly have done this at the first sketch. However, I have decided against that as I thought that it would be good to get an overall preview of the final shape. At the same time, we can keep the sketches as simple as possible. Let's hide the body and unhide the first sketch. Create a sketch on the top plane. Draw two straight lines from the origin to the center points of these two circles. Let's hide the first sketch and unhide the body. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the main body as a body to split. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select the sketch with the two straight lines. If you have the Extend Splitting Tools option checked, the splitting plane will extend beyond the sketch line and cut the body. We shall continue working on this section and hide the rest. Let's unhide the first sketch. We need to start thinking about creating the transition between the top face and this straight line. We first need to split this face at the point where the straight line starts. Let's hide the body and create a sketch on the top plane. Draw a straight line to join the end points of these two straight lines. Do the same here. We are going to use these two lines to split these two faces. Go to Modify, Split Face. For faces to split, select this face. For splitting tool, select the sketch. After you confirm, the sketch is hidden. Unhide the sketch and repeat the split face operation for the other face. Activate the Surface tab. Control select these faces and hit the delete key to delete them. The solid body becomes a surface body with an opening. If we look at the cross section of one of the concave faces, we can see that its profile is governed by an arc. We need to sketch this arc for lofting later. This arc would have to be sketched on a plane that bisects this section. Go to Construct Mid Plane. This command is commonly used to create a mid plane between two parallel faces. But you can also create a plane that bisects two faces at an angle. Select these two faces. Start a sketch on this new construction plane. Before we can put down an arc, we need to create points that the arc can snap to. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. If we hover over the straight line, we can see a red dot appearing. This is the point where the straight line intersects with the sketch plane. Upon seeing this red dot, perform a click. Do the same for the curved edge. Once you confirm, you will see these two points in purple. Start a 3 point arc and snap to these two points. Go to Create, Loft. 
the Dark this age as the first profile, the Arc as the second, and this age as the third. Click on the select box for rails, and start selecting the chain of ages that line the edge of the top surface. This will form the first rail. Click on the plus sign and select the straight line that was created in the first sketch. This will be the second rail. These two rails are essentially our guiding lines for the loft. If you look at the bottom, there is still an opening. We need to close this opening with a patch surface. Uncheck the chaining option. Select the open edges and confirm. Go to Modify, Stitch. Select all the surfaces and stitch this into a solid body. Go to Create, Pattern, Circular Pattern. For Pattern Type, select Bodies and select the body in question. For axis, click on the select box and select this edge. Set the quantity to 3 and confirm. Activate the solid tab. Go to modify, combine. Select all three bodies and combine them into one single solid. There is still one last feature we need to create, which is this ridge. This is on the top surface and is at an offset from the outer edge. Let's create a sketch on the top plane. We want to create the path of the ridge as seen from the top. Let's project this surface. Hide the body for a better look. Create an offset from the projected lines. Obviously, we cannot use this line to create a ridge. We need to project this onto the top convex face. Go to Modify, Split Face. Select the top face as the face will split. For Splitting tool, select the Offset Sketch. Now we have a line from which to work with. Instead of creating a profile and sweeping it, we can use a Pipe command. Think of the pipe command as a sweep command with ready-made profiles. Control select the chain of edges. In this case, we shall use a circular section. Select the section size. For operation, select join and confirm.